All right, today we're going to make an e-paper hat display some information on it. I'm going to go from a completely fresh installation of uh, Raspbian all the way to get this on here. So let's get started. All right. So we have the Raspberry Pi here in the middle. And let's get logged in. It's got a fresh copy of uh, Raspbian on it. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yelling at me because I'm using the default password. Like I said, brand new setup. So let's go through this and see if we can quickly get this started. First off, let's do uh, let's update it. Then we're going to upgrade. We've updated. Let's get the upgrade process set up. Well, that only took forever. So, uh, you know, three hours later, here we are. All right, so now that's done the update, let's move on to see if we can do anything. I'm not sure if Python 3 is included with uh, um, the base of... Uh, uh, Raspbian, so let's check it out. Hey, look at that. Cool. So, not sure if we can do uh, virtual environments, but we'll try that too. Let's try. Nope. So, all this to my uh, list of stuff to do. I'm only adding a virtual environment because I don't want to dirty it all up. Got to put a pseudo in front of that. Shazam. All right, what I'm going to do is basically run through the entire setup process and then I'll go through the uh, code that I'm actually using. So let's do that. Create a virtual environment. It's thinking about it. All right, and we're done. So let's uh, to make that the source, we're gonna change into it. There we go. And these are some of the packages I believe I need. I think I need all of them. Um, so we'll just make it easy and copy and paste that in there. All of this uh, stuff's gonna be in uh, the Git at the in the description below. Yes, I do want to install them. All right. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to install the Python stuff, but there's something I think that's going to break before this actually works. So let's do this first and then I'll explain what's, what's coming. So first off, if you look, we have no, uh, no files to actually run in this. So let's get the, those over there, reconnect that session. It's not going to work because I changed the password. All right, so we're in the demo. These should be all the files I need. These are all on the Git in the description below. Copy these all over. Okay, now we have image and test. So we're gonna go over here and see if we can run test. Now this shouldn't work, but maybe it'll surprise me. Let's see. Denied. So it couldn't find the SPI open. All right. so. One of the things is you have to enable SPI. So give me a second. So we're going to do, in fact, let's put that at the top. We're going to go down to interface options, SPI. Do we want it enabled? We sure do. Awesome. I think I have to restart after this. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, let's try reloading. Can't remember if it's reboot. It's not gonna be, jeez. There we go. All right, so it'll come back in a second. All right, we're back.
get logged in. Let's do, well, we'll activate the source again. Change directories into it. Then we're doing 2.7 test. And all right, the screen should be going. Hey, look at that, it worked. All right, so let me go over and show you uh, some of the stuff it does really quick. I'm gonna make this full screen. So basically each time you press a button, um, a different screen comes up. All right, let's show you how all this was done. So here we have the demo uh, um, folder that I dragged over, drug over. Anyway, it has import socket, which is, uh, I'm using to get the host name down here. Um, we're pulling in date and time because if you see at the bottom of the, uh, the screen there it has last updated. Um, that's how I'm telling what time it is. Um, we're pulling the uh, information to use the buttons when you press the uh, keys. They're labeled as keys on the uh, board itself. I label them as keys here, but within the GPIO, they're called buttons. So whatever. Um, we're importing net ifaces. Net ifaces? Anyways, they're the network interfaces so we can gather the network interface information. So that's how I'm getting Ethernet zero, the MAC address and the IP address. Um, next we're importing the um, EPD two, two and seven, and I'm calling that the driver, but I'm not sure if that's the correct definition, but basically it's the, um, the file behind it all that makes all the magic happen. Um, I will show you something in that right now, actually. So one of the things when I pulled these in here it is so under the import it had dot space EPD config so that um, was causing an issue so I removed the uh, period in front of the EPD config so if you do pull um, this file directly from from Waveshare um, it's going to have the period in front of it if you notice an issue or you get an error when you use it that's how I fixed it. Um, and I did that using uh, a comment that was left on another person's Git. So um, I think I had to do it for the uh, EPD config as well, but maybe not. No, this all looks fine. So this should look exactly like uh, the Waveshare one. Anyway, so I'm also using signal to import a pause. Um, this is how when the script completes it doesn't just automatically close so I can go back in and actually press a button. So what you're seeing me do when I was standing up and I had this full screen was I was actually pressing the uh, individual uh, buttons. So yeah, it worked. Um, PIL is the imaging stuff. I'm not entirely sure how all that works, but it does. Um, I have a comment here for the uh, resolution because I kept forgetting and I needed it for reference. Um, here are all the keys, including the pins that they're connected to and what they come across later on. Um, we get the display, we initialize it. I mess it up. Uh, there's a print clear. And so basically, and it's just saying that's clear in the console or the clear in the display. Um, the print does print to the console, doesn't print to the display, so we could watch it. Um, the host name, I'm using socket get host name, local IP address, I'm using the uh, interface address from uh, net interfaces to get the IP address, which you see in the uh, on the screen right now. So this function um, is looking for a string and it comes from down here. So let me minimize these. I'll go over those in a second. 
So basically, once it goes through, or when it comes up, it goes, and I've created keys when pressed, it goes to handle button press uh, function, which is right here. And these line up with these keys. So for instance, if you hit five, um, it sends this information uh, as a message to print display. So in this case, net info is right here and it takes the uh, network information and it's just basically a, an F string that's printing this to the string itself. So you see the top line currently displayed as network information. Next line is host name with the host name of Raspberry Pi. Ethernet zero is hard coded in there. I could probably get it from uh, somewhere else, but I know it's Ethernet zero, so that's why I put it in there. Um, and in fact, I'm actually calling Ethernet zero specifically for the MAC address and IP address. So it has MAC address and the IP address of the device. And then I put the two extra lines there because essentially that's all the space I have left is two more lines. So the next one is network statistics and I haven't done anything. It's kind of a placeholder. Um, but I wanted to put this out there before I actually started making this more complicated than it already is with the uh, network information in case somebody else wants to modify it for their own use. Um, so it goes, you pick one of those, it goes here, sends the F string of whatever it is up here to print display and so basically it's saying that the, it makes the image uh, new then it's drawing the image and what it does go through so I've created three different fonts you'll see that I have a font.tcc here and there's a font that you can't see here I'll show right right there font tcc I don't remember which font I'm using but that's also in the git um, I think it's from Google's uh, font repository thing. I just randomly picked one and said, here, this is it. So you should be able to replace that with any font that you choose. If you uh, choose Comic Sans, well, pox on you. Um, so, sorry, let's go back here. Um, so anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm actually doing, drawing two lines. Um, these, are, these are at the top. So these are right under where you see network information. And they are, I put two of them because I didn't want them a single pixel thick. I wanted two pixels thick. And this was the easiest way I could come up with to do it. Um, then this text is the string. So this is what th all of this gets put there. So that starts from the top and these are all uh, coordinates. So 40 pixels down two pixel or sorry 40 pixels to the right or from the left and then two pixels down it starts with the uh um text and then so that, that's basically that the main box section so underneath is the bottom section of the screen with the date and time and you see that it pulls uh date and time for now so whatever time it was um and then it, uh, sorry, this is the layout of the string. So this is how it's going to be formatted. And then this one is 30. Uh, it draws two string, uh, two lines above it at 34, uh, from the left going all the way across. And then below it is the last updated, then this date and time string, which is now formatted. Um, and I'm using font small because I didn't need it to be as bold because I really don't care about it so much, but it does give, um, it, it's fantastic to know what time this was last updated because sometimes or because it can be unplugged and this screen will stay like this. You won't be able to press the buttons and getting more information, but it's really cool that it just that's always going to be there. So you could do something neat, like put something more static on it, like the serial number or something like that, that you always want to know, Oh, this is whatever. So the next part is the left section of the screen with key descriptions. So I wanted a, a way to tell what each 
key would do. So I made it more of a static configuration. So you see that I drew the line, the vertical line, and I did it second or two of them. So it's two pixels thick. Um, underneath that, I have um, the text for uh, the network uh, info. It's hard to see with the camera and I apologize, but it is there and it does work and I, it is legible in person. Um, I'll, yeah. So the next one is a rectangle. So I'm drawing a rectangle around it, which is kind of silly because I could just use horizontal lines, but I wanted to show something else that this uh, uh, e-ink display can recognize and draw. So um, this is around the key one text. So I did that for each of them, um, increasing by 44 pixels. Um, because 176 divided by four was 44, made it easy to divide it up evenly. Um, there's probably a user experience person that's like crying right now because none of it's centered or anything like that. And I could do it. I just didn't, just didn't, honestly, just didn't. Um, it'd be super easy to actually put each of these like two pixels down from the line and just call it good. Um, but that can all be tweaked on however you want. So, after that, um, it displays it, or it takes the, the buffer and actually uh, displays it. So that's essentially it. Um, it While it's running, I don't have it running as a, a, a service, or I can't remember what the Linux terminology is for it, but essentially I, I have to have that uh, um, Python script running. So, but right now I can go over there and press any of the buttons. Like if I want to see CPU info, though it doesn't do anything, I just press the CPU info button. And it has a CPU info. So that is a uh, 2.7 test.py. And you got to see exactly what it took to go from a blank um, Raspberry Pi to where it is now. So let's go here. We're going to stop it, Control C to kill it. Um, and we're actually going to do 2.7 uh, image. So this can display image in grayscale. And this is a super simple script. Let's pull it up. And what I have it showing right now is some. Um, just network cables. And this is my I, I, icon thing that I use for a couple of sites. So anyway, again, I put the uh, display. I made sure that this image is the same resolution as the display. I'm importing. Actually, I don't need to import any of that. Um, I'm importing the, uh, the again, driver and the uh, uh, pill, um, the, what is it, image library. Um, so I can use those. Um, I should delete that other stuff. I just hadn't yet. Um, anyway, so get the display, initialize it. We clear it. Um, or we say we're going to clear it and then we clear it. And then literally it's image, open image, and then it displays the image. That's all there is to it. Um, at this point, I'm not sure how to combine the images with a, with text and stuff like that. Um, which would be kind of where I would want to go next with it. But again, this is kind of a, a base level thing for everybody else to play with. And it was a, a quick example or a quick, uh, way to demonstrate the capabilities of this, uh, e-paper hat. And so far I'm totally stoked by it. Um, I'm going to go run the test again. Let's do that. And that'll put up the the network information on there again and I'll show that I can unplug it and stuff like that and it'll just work. So let me let me pull up my other uh all right let's do there we go. Alright I'm gonna unplug it and you can see that it still maintains the image without anything in there. Hope you uh, learned something from this and find it useful.